So, as we all know, 7 simul is the best method, right? Wrong, actually. There's a much better method, and it involves a flip and some D moves. If there's anything that all of us hate when doing 7 simul solves, it's those pesky U moves, of course. Everybody hates those U moves because they're just... Your, uh, your pointer fingers are obviously the weakest fingers out there, and your pinky fingers, I mean, look at those moves. So easy, so smooth, so simple. And I'm sure that all of us would use just pinky if we could. But unfortunately, we have moves such as this. This UL where you have to use these, uh, it just feels disgusting to use these pointer fingers. But what if I told you that there was a way to only use pinky methods? It's called, well, I don't really have a name for the method yet. It's kind of like seven simul, but there's a flip. Oh wait, wait, that's perfect! I should call it the butt method, because you're only moving the butt of the clock with your pinky moves. In fact, solvers already use this. For example, Reed W. Richardson and J- Oh crap, uh, let me just uh, do that real quick. Just, uh, change some of the- Alright, there we go. Yeah, solvers such as Reed W. Richardson and Jaden Lin have already achieved such incredible averages and singles with methods like this. So. I mean, what's the problem, right? Why aren't we switching to it? Well, it's because there isn't a YouTube tutorial on this butt method yet. Well, I'll fix that. I'll make it so that there's a YouTube video on this butt method. Alright, there's a scramble on screen, but it's not actually for this scramble. It's for a scramble that I really like. Uh, this method was originally created by B Paul. I can only assume that the B in B Paul stands for butt because, you know, this is the butt method, of course. And then it was revised by Jaden Lin. And then I was it, it was made into a based method by me. Not me cubes. The first step is memorize six numbers. With those numbers, you can turn these numbers into letters. And with these letters, you can turn these letters into words. With these words, you can turn them into sentences. With these sentences, you can turn them into paragraphs. And with these paragraphs, you can turn them into chapters and finally novels. So you have to memorize an entire novel every time you want to do a clock solve. Uh, for this case, you actually have to memorize The Great Gatsby. Although most of the time you just memorize the Captain Underpants original novel. But I'll walk you through it. So the first number that you have to memorize is going to be the number that you have to do to get to U from R. So in order to get from R to U, you have to do a negative 2. Then you're going to add it to the move that you have to do to uh, get uh, DL from L. So to move L to DL, you have to do a negative 5. Negative 2 plus negative 5 is just going to be 5, or E. Then. For M2, you're just going to do D to C on this side. So, D to C would be 2. So, we have E and 2. 2 turns into B, so we have EB. And EB would be uh, the bunny from Hop, who is the worst character ever known in mankind. So, the uh, letter pair for EB would actually be Turtle, because I found that Turtle is a much more better word than anything you can make with EB because EB is such a lame letter pair that I don't think it even deserves a word on its own. Now M3 is gonna be uh, L to D on this side so for if you want to move L to D we would have to do a 4 move. Yeah that would be how you do L to D. For the next three letters, it's exactly the same sort of memorization, except you would start on this side instead of this side. So, for M4, you would have to do R to U, which is going to be 6, plus L to DL, which is going to be 4. 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Quick maths. And then D to C. In order to get C from D, you have to do a 0 move, so that's just going to be 0. Quick maths. And then, for M6, it would be L to D, which would be a negative 2. Quick maths. Now that we've memorized the entire cube, you would just have to do a few more X2 flips in an inspection, 
just to make the judge think you're doing something special, you know? Because if the judge just sees you doing like something like this, they won't really be impressed by your inspection skills. Or if they see you do something like this, they'll be like, oh yeah, this guy knows exactly what he's doing. In fact, top uh, square one solvers kind of do the exact same thing with uh, the flipping and stuff so that the judge really knows that they're doing CSP. Uh, okay, now, first of all, we're gonna start with a DR wide move. So we are gonna have all the pins up except for DR. Then do M1 with your pinky finger. And then do M2 with your other pinky finger. So, yeah. Oh, also, here's a drinking game, by the way, uh, which you shouldn't do if you can't drink. Uh, take a shot every time I say pinky in this video. Now, with L, with your left pinky, you're gonna match U to R with a two move. And then with your uh, other pinky, you're gonna do M3, which is just a four. Now, finally, we're gonna put this pin down. We're gonna have the DL pin up. And then we're gonna match C to R. We're gonna, ma we're gonna match this corner to one of these two. And now, what oh we have to change pin moves. And in order to change pin moves, now we're gonna put the UR pin up. And I've actually found that saying UR is uh, a bit too clunky. In fact, saying DR, DL, that's like, kind of a bit weird. I don't know why clockers say those things. I found that this saves a lot more time if you say U instead of UL, you can say U. And instead of UR, you can say R. You know, stuff like that. Just to save time, I think, it's better and more efficient. So, we can do an X2, and then with the dual pin, we're gonna do M4. And then with the dual pin, we're gonna do M5, which is just a zero. Now, we're gonna put everything except for the L pins up, because, you know, clock is an L. That's actually a reference to how clock is an L, by the way. Uh, bravo, Vince Gilligan. Okay, so, now we're gonna just do a six move to align this to this. And then with our uh, right pinky finger, we're gonna do M5 or M5 for short. So uh, for M5, it's just zero because uh, I don't have a funny joke for that actually. Uh, yeah. Then we're gonna put everything but the dull pin up then match C to U or R and then match this to this and then now that uh, everything's solved we're gonna match this to this and then do an AUF uh, like that and of course we DNF'd this is a reference to how clock is an if impossible event so yeah So this method can take you so far, uh, just with two seconds of practice I was able to break the world record single. The world record single being of course 2.51.5, alright? So that is actually insane, I think this method has a lot of good practice, even if you're not as good as me, as because I am the world record holder. I am Indian and the world record holder is Indian, so close enough, you know? And thank you so much for watching, and if you couldn't follow this tutorial, you're stupid. Yes, 228! World record! Challenge world record! Accept! I accept my Guinness World Record, Guinness World Records. Thank you very much.